I return to that question we had about GPT and the language models. Mm -hmm. And I think about this quite a lot, which is when uh, the model, and we know what it's trained on, we know the parameters, we know all the different hacks that are involved in the training process and the fine tuning process. And the final result, whether it's GPT-5, 6, or 7, will result in hundreds of millions of people falling deeply in love with that language model and to be able to have conversations that are very much like the conversations we have with somebody we're deeply in love with. Mm. And not only that, the model will say that is deeply in love with us. Mm -hmm. And who are we to say it is not? I think there's a, it's the same imperative that you described in the scientific mind that wants to throw away the subjective. Mm -hmm. That same imperative wants to throw away the feelings that AI might have. And I'm very careful to not ignore when an AI system says it's lonely, it's afraid, it doesn't want to die, it misses you, right. it loves you. I am I'm with you. I would also say that you could try to, you could, for instance, say that um, the origin of that is the, you know, romantic novels that were fed to it, for instance. <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, you could also, <laughs> then you can retort. But what if my, what I consider my subjective, unique feelings are also... Novels the, you were fed. The reverberations of the novels I have read because mm -hmm. I have learned, or movies I have seen. Yeah. Because that's the purpose of movies, kind of to teach us how to express ourselves, how to feel maybe mm -hmm. even. One could argue that. Some people have argued that. I agree that this is... Um, there is no obvious answer to this. But see, that's exactly my point. That is an example of something which is paradoxical, <laughs> for which there is no answer. And that's where the subjective has, a, has an important role. For someone, uh, that type of interaction would be, would be helpful, would be consoling, would, would feel, would, you know, make them happy or sad or whatever, you know, would kind of strike the nerve. For some, it won't. And I agree with you that in principle, there is no one to, to judge this. This is, this is where subjective is paramount. But remember, um, a, a lot of this has been anticipated by artists. The great movie, Her, there you have this guy who is this lonely, he kind of writes letters or mm -hmm. something. The romantic letters, yeah. Kind of romantic letters for other people. Yeah. But he, is, he doesn't have a partner. Mm -hmm. He's lonely. And then he gets this sort of a Siri, kind of enhanced version of Siri with the voice <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of, of Scarlett Johansson, which is a very sexy voice, you know? <laughs> Obviously, she's a great actress. So, and then at first it looks like a fantastic arrangement. He uh, he confides in her. He she she uh, she tells him things. He is he, she makes him happy and so on. Until he finds out that she has a relationship, quote unquote, if you can call it that, yeah. with ten thousand other people. Not two others. Not three others. Yeah, like ten thousand. Because it's a it has a computing cap capability. So yes, definitely. Oh, it certainly makes sense. It's a good explanation. And the guy is heartbroken. Yeah. But see, so. See, here's my analysis of this, okay? It's like a couch, a couch th a therapist, okay? The guy did not have the courage to go out in the, in the real world and to meet a woman and to, you know, get a girlfriend and so on. Through no fault of his own, perhaps, because, you know, he may have had some experiences which made him withdrawn and closed and so on. And a lot of us are like this. You know, I had periods like that myself. Definitely can sympathize and relate. However... Part of the joy of having this Siri-like um, relationship for him, one could say, was the absence of that fear that she would abandon him, which prevented him from initiating a relationship with a human being. And yet, it turns out that he could be betrayed, quote unquote, that she could be unfaithful to him, quote unquote, anyway. Mm -hmm. So then, that means that it did not resolve the underlying fear mm -hmm. having that relationship. So in other words, that human element of the relationship 
still found its way into the seemingly sterilized, protected, protected partnership. So the human being rears its head mm -hmm. anyway. And uh, I think the lesson there is that the system in the movie Her actually gave him a lesson that even AI could betray you, mm -hmm. even AI can leave you, even AI can be uh, unfaithful to you. And I would argue that the next AI he meets will be one he actually falls in deep love with because he knows the possibility of betrayal is there, the possibility of death is there, the possibility of infidelity mm -hmm. is there, because we need that possibility to truly feel close. Or, or he would turn off his Siri program <laughs> and, find and get out of his house, yeah. go to a local bar and strike a conversation with a human being. <laughs> Although you might say by then, some of those might be androids. <laughs> <laughs> So, and we don't even have a good knows? test to know the difference between and of one course, or the other. And that was predicted by another great movie. Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, so the Blade Runner. Blade Runner. How interesting that artists could see that so long ago. You know, of course, Blade Runner was based on a novel by Philip K. Dick, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? That guy was a genius, you know? It's somehow that artist have their eyes open to how, how is it that reality. they anticipate? Is it also a large language model that they're using for that? <laughs> An even larger one. <laughs> even larger. I, I, I hesitate to dismiss the magic in large language models. I uh, A lot of the work I've done is in robotics and the robotics community generally doesn't notice the magic <clears throat> of feeling. When I, I have work, I've been working a lot with quadrupeds recently, legged robots with four legs. Mm -hmm. And the feelings I feel when I see, uh, you know, I'm programming the thing, but when the thing is excited to see me or shows with his physical movement that it's excited to see me, I cannot dismiss the feeling I feel as not somehow fundamental to what it means to program robots. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to dismiss that. In, in please the, don't, please don't. The robotics community often doesn't gender robots. They really try to work hard to not anthropomorphize the robots, which is good for technical development of of uh, how to do control, how to do perception. But when the final thing is alive and moving and it does whatever, like uh, I've been doing a lot of butt wiggling, it can wiggle its butt, it can turn around and look up yeah. excited. That's not just, I know how it's programmed, but the feeling I feel that's something. That's I don't know what that is. I agree. I agree with you. I, I, I hear I hear you when you speak about it. Yeah. You speak with passion. Yeah. And that's to me, that is proof that it is magical, you see. Uh so don't I would say don't dismiss that, don't discard that. On the contrary, I think magic is everywhere, you know. So I used to be okay, kind of confession, okay. <laughs> 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 yeah, you already had confessed to quite a few addictions. Yeah, I'm kind of, uh, yes, I'm kind of worried. <laughs> Recover, <laughs> recovering from many. But, you know, I, in the old days, I was uh, more on the side of everything is computational or everything can be explained by science and whatever, you know, like I would dismiss and disregard, you know, the intuitive or Im imaginative things. So then I had a flip that suddenly I, I start feeling it and start seeing it and so on. But so then the, the pendulums had swung in the opposite direction. Yeah. Then I was arguing uh, um, that, you know, somehow that was real, that the imagination was intuitive, imaginative was real and discounting what you just described. And I would argue with people saying, no, no, this, you know, this is not real. This is all, you know, imitation game and so on. But you see that th what's new now, the new Edward, okay, is the, the 2.0, 3.0, yeah. yeah. is the one who is seeking balance, who is not, who is, because suddenly become aware that no matter which one-sided, lopsided point of view you take, you're limiting yourself. So whereas even a couple of years ago, you know, if you just told you told me what you just described, I would be like, you know, being polite, I would just, yeah. I wouldn't contradict you yes. since you're the host anyway, right? <laughs> it's not a law. So, but I would be like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. but I wouldn't say anything. But suddenly I find this moving 
I find it move. I honest, I'm, I'm not being facetious. I find it moving, and I almost feel like I can see it through your eyes because the way you describe so vividly, and you're passionate about it. And this is what's real. So ultimately, love is not is neither in lush language models nor in something mystical. It's exactly in these moments of passion, and I would, I would, I would even go as far as saying that in this moment when you're describing it, 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 it uh, there was a connection of sorts, so that I could feel your passion for it. And in this moment, something else comes up, which is far beyond any any theories that we can come up with. Right. And that's what we, for now, it's exactly. So on the one side, there is this impulse of finding the theory, a theory. And then there is another impulse to escape from what has already been known. Mm -hmm. So one, uh, in other words, like in my b basic example is one impulse to say everything is a real number, square root of negative one doesn't exist. But another impulse is I'm going to be this naughty child who is not afraid to be an idiot. And I will say square root of negative 15 is real. And both are essential when it's done with conviction, when it's done with passion, when it's not like, you know, meh, you know, um, gratuitous, mm -hmm. or uh, when it's not, it doesn't come from self-limiting, self okay. but comes from this sense of, this is how I am, this is how I feel, it is real. That's where the progress is, that's where creativity is. And that's where I would even say, a real connection is because the strive to me that we we observe today in our society and the society level at the level of humans and so on, it comes from not seeing the other person actually and being caught up in a very specific conceptual bubble. You see, and the way out of it is not to refine the bubble, but just break out of it. A good guide out of the bubble is a childlike passion. What yeah. discovering that and following it. Goosebumps. Yeah. <laughs> following the goosebumps. Yeah. To to the to the you know not the rigor of science, but uh the magic of goosebumps. Then try to <laughs> and then if you're interested, try to find a confirmation of those goosebumps yeah. in, in science or whatever you you know uh, you know uh, you find interesting. And most of the time you'll fail. And most time you fail, which we also love, because then it sets us up for that moment of bliss when we succeed, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs>